So let's talk about why I decided to study Mandarin in Shanghai, China, how I did it, and the lessons that I've learned from it. A lot of you can relate to my story. Maybe when you were younger, even right now, you feel like you couldn't fit in. I was slowly looking at it from a standpoint of race. I realize now that race doesn't define who you are, but growing up Italian and Chinese American, I really could not identify with my peers. As I got older, when I went to college, I began to meet people from all over the world. And I slowly started to be like, wow, I am interested in Chinese culture. I want to learn a little bit about it. At the time, I was focused on my career. I graduated college, got a job, and I worked to make myself what I thought was someone important. When I turned 27, I was satisfied with my career. I was a restaurant manager, but then I realized I finally achieved my goal, but I felt empty inside. I still always had in the back of my mind to learn Chinese. I just typed in online Chinese language programs in Shanghai. Hi, I was like, this is the program that I'm doing. The end goal was to eventually find a restaurant management job in a Western restaurant. Anyway, starting the program is very overwhelming because it was six hours a day of intensive Chinese reading, writing, speaking, listening. It was also amazing to meet people from different parts of the world. Russia, Korea, Japan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, all these places that as an American growing up, I had little to no reference points about. I really enjoyed going to the canteen where they prepared home cooked Chinese food. You had your meat, veggies, fish, noodles, rice, and a soup every day. Also during my trip, I traveled to different parts of China. I went to Harbin to see the ice festival. I also went to Guangzhou where my ancestors were from. It still has that distinct traditional feel to it in some parts. Mamma mia! Living in Shanghai, I had this crazy feeling that I've only felt twice in my life, and that's having a sense of familiarity. When I walked through the streets, I felt like I've already been there before. I longed to be here for a long time, so it was very special. On my days off, I used to like going to local restaurants. They had no English menus. I volunteered with the Deaf and Blind Society, some elderly people. We would walk around this park. They would talk to us. And this is not so much about me flexing. Like, oh, my Chinese is so great. I'm just telling you that at a later stage of my life, I followed my heart and did something that from a society standpoint set me back. But from a personal growth standpoint, it changed my life. And it's not so much about actually learning Chinese. It was the actual actual putting in the work, the people that I met, the food that I ate, that's what makes it special. I realized the goal was never to learn Mandarin, it was to learn more about myself. And even when you have the courage to follow your heart, sometimes it's not going to be easy. There's a Chinese proverb that I like called Suan Tian Ku La. And we go through life experiencing different things. We'll have high times and we'll have low times. That's what makes a fulfilling, enriching experience of being human. And last thing, Mamma mia! Get the chair shirts, link in my bio.